Hey there, welcome back. Today, I'm so excited because we're gonna be starting our new project of a non-representational painting or non-objective painting. So uh, basically, this, this um, project that we're doing today is it's like a painting of paint, essentially. It's, um, you can think of it as abstract, and that would be a, an appropriate term, I think, most of the time, but we're not really abstracting from something. So sometimes people think that. This is really more of, of just like non-representational. So you're not trying to represent something specifically other than, you know, something abstract or some sort of idea. Um, I don't mind if you are inspired by nature. That's obviously, you can't escape that. Um, but our goal is to really just like make a, a painting, um, a successful painting utilizing the, the principles of design. And, you know, it, and that's a challenge. It really it honestly is. And sometimes, you know, like you'll see like paintings and you're like, oh, anyone could do that. It's just, it's so easy or whatever. And then when you start off, you like to try to do it yourself, you like, which we're going to do here, right? Like after we finish this video, you'll find out that it's, it's actually a lot harder than it, than it looks. Okay. Now, sometimes, um, you get lucky, <laughs> you know, I've gotten lucky sometimes, you know, you just start off like, oh, I'll just do this. And then you're like, oh, this is a big old mess. Um, and, you know, but sometimes you, you kind of stumble across cool things. And so, um, you know, it is good to kind of like have at least some sort of kind of abstract goal in mind in this. Um, intentionality is super important in, in life. Even if there's, um, there's spontaneity, which there is, there's always spontaneity. Uh, it's, it's good to kind of have some sort of structure as well to, for the spontaneity to even play on. So, um, anyway, I don't want to get too much. I don't want to get too far into that, but, um, I think sometimes the students, when they start off this project, they think, Oh, I'll just start spreading paint around and see what happens. And I think that's okay at first, but you know, I think initially, um, I think students are just like, well, what? It, I was expecting a masterpiece to happen and it just like, it just turned into mud, you know? And so if you find yourself in that, in that place where you're just kind of displeased, um, you know, I think having some sort of like objective, something that you're, you're really planning and like thinking about like, what works so why does this painting work or or doesn't it you know like like well is it is it working or not and so if it's working then then you can think about why is it working or if it's not working you're like well why is this not pleasing to look at why is this static or why is this just not interesting so um anyway so we're going to be playing around with that and so um i'm just going to show you guys by the way, before I get into it too far, check out the modules online. It, look in the um, in your class. Go through all the the modules. Do the reading through there, and you'll it'll have some more examples that you can see, um, and some more helpful advice to to help you get started with this project. But just um, because you're watching right now, I just was going to show you um, a couple things. So there's artists that you know. First of all, this book, again, I, I highly recommend this book. Um, it's, it's a great book for this class. You don't necessarily need to go buy it, but if you can go to the library and find it, that would be awesome. Um, you know, we don't have a, have a book for this class, um, but if you did want to buy a book, this one, this one might not be a bad one to actually buy. But you can see, like, here's a Jackson Pollock. And I don't actually recommend um, trying to do a Jackson Pollock necessarily. One... It's hard to do anyway, especially with our materials and what we're using in this class. You wouldn't be able to achieve this. Um, I mean, I'm not here to say you can't do it, but it, it'd be really hard, okay? And there's reasons for that. And if you read this and you kind of understand how Jackson Pollock worked and what the things he was doing, you'd understand that this achieving the same thing would be very difficult. But, um, and the reason why I say you don't necessarily just want to do drips and stuff is because I want you guys to... Um, uh, you know, really explore and, and try to, to learn about the properties of the paint and really get a, a feel for your materials in this process. So that way you can take the things that you learned from this painting and use it 
for when we're doing representational work or whatever kind of painting that you want to achieve in the in the future. So if you start off just trying to paint like Jackson Pollock, like doing drips all over the place, um, that's basically all you're going to be able to do. Like you won't have the freedom to bring those elements into other work. All right. Well, I mean, unless you practice integrating them into other things. So anyway, um, this book's great too, because it, it shows, you know, like even kind of how he was working. And so it gives you insight. And I think also the more you kind of learn about these other artists that come before for us, like here's a Rothko, you guys are probably familiar with, with his work, but, uh, you know, the more you become familiar with some of these, these people, the more you can really appreciate their, their work and kind of their, their contributions to art in general. And, um, you know, we can learn from them. Even if you don't like, like, I'm not a huge fan of Mark Rothko, his work. I'm not, I, I dig it, like, for, it's like historical importance and everything, but I'm not, like, a huge fan. Like, I don't, but I do, I do like it in a weird way. Like, I, I, it's not for me. It's not something I necessarily want to do, but I, I dig it. Like, it, and I can appreciate it. I think that's the difference. I, it may not, it might not be my favorite, but I can appreciate it. Um, and so anyway, you can kind of see some of like his work. Sorry, on the video, this isn't very good, but there'll be other examples that you can see online in the, in the class. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys, there's, there's a lot of cool artists that are out there that you can get inspiration from, uh, because I like to look at these things and then it, it gets me excited to go out and try to do my own thing. And so, um, just a couple, um, tips too like as you're going through this actually i'm going to hold off on this one i'm going to I have two more examples i just want to show you really quickly um so just some tips because you might find that you run into to like like a little snag in your process like i don't know where to go it's like i can go anywhere and if you you can get lost really quickly so one thing that is kind of cool like if you have like a oh, paint this was like kind of this demo that i i'll just explain pouring paint on here but if you just like take like parts of your painting you know like if you just like crop in like well this part actually looks kind of cool the rest of it you know whatever but that part that actually kind of worked out so you can take like a part of like your old painting like if you had painted over your color wheel which i did i just painted over it so you can take part of that and maybe you find like a cool like you might have to turn it around and upside down turn your your camera around a bunch of different times but you might find um a, a section of it that's that works that's cool you're like that's a neat composition i don't you might not even be able to put it into words but you're like i like this 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 works and so then you can take that and um use that as like a reference to building your own your your own new non-representational work so this one this is I, again, this is the one, um, I, this was my color wheel. I just painted over it. Um, and I, I had a longer video for the color wheel and I just, it got too long. So I had to, I stopped it, but I was kind of showing you how I got to this point, but I'm going to paint over this. So this was just me exploring the paints and just kind of, um, playing around. And that's kind of what I wanted you guys to do too, but that video got too long. So I had to, edit that out. So that's what that one's from. I'll just paint over it. But if you can find like, like elements of, of your play that turned out really cool, like, oh, that was a neat, neat texture. That was a cool, like how that red and that like bright green came together. It's like, that was a really cool color combination. You can use those, those like happy accidents, right? To you know, borrow from our good old friend, Bob here, you know, use those happy accidents and then like take it intentionally and, and make something from it. So one of the things that I, I kind of like to, like this is another artist that I, I love. I actually, I really do love Richard Tuttle. Not, again, it's not something I, I do a lot in my own personal work, but I really have a deep appreciation for his work. And one of the things kind of cool about these, like um, you can like cut stuff up. Like imagine um, if you did a, a painting or whatever, if you painted on like cardboard or something, you could, just cut that out and then assemble um, parts of it. You're like, oh, this was a cool part. And you can cut that out. And then 
you know, that could be your artwork itself, or you could use that as, as inspiration for um, like, oh, you can assemble all those, those pieces together from different paintings, essentially, and then, and then make a, a painting from that too. So there's different ways to kind of combine those things. Um, the last thing I just want to go over really quick, and hopefully this is helpful. If you're still absolutely st just stuck and you don't know where to go, one other kind of thing that you might draw from, and this is more like the abstract kind of path to, to take this assignment, is um, taking what we can learn from Georgie O'Keeffe. And, um, you know, a lot of you guys are familiar with like her flowers and, and works like that. But, um, you know, some of it's like representational. So I'll just find one really quick. But you can kind of tell like if you if you zoom in, like really close like this like that's a flower but it's like if you zoom in like close enough it becomes really like abstract and so that's something else you could do if you go out in nature you can find um you could just zoom in on something like to a point like of absurdity where you can't really even recognize it anymore and use that as inspiration to for your composition at least and then you can play around, you can change colors as you want and stuff. But, you know, I love this, this work from Georgie O'Keeffe, this, this uh, blue and green music from 1919. Isn't that just lovely? Awesome painting. Oh, it's so cool. I have tons of these books because I hoard art books. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It's just, hopefully it was just meant to just get your like creative juices flowing. We're going to go out and and just try to do our abstract or non-objective, non-representational painting. And this is gonna be like a part one video. I'll, I'm gonna do that project too. Like I said, I'm gonna do all these projects with you, but for the sake of keeping this video short, I'm gonna end it right here. Let's go out and um, let's start over. Let's, or I'm gonna start over. I have my, my color wheel I'm gonna paint over. That's what I'm gonna use. That's why I said start over. But let's just get started. You can paint over your color wheel too if you want and use that same canvas again. Or just um, get a new one, okay? So let's go get started, look for inspiration, and um, I'll be back and I'll show you what I've done. I'm really looking forward to seeing um, your works too. So you can always send me a progress shot too, like as it's developing or if you have questions, please let me know, email me, message me. You can even leave comments down below and I'll get back to you. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with and I'm excited to share whatever I come up with. I have no idea, but it's a, it's a sunny day out right now and I'm feeling like doing some non-objective painting. All right, take care. We'll see you in the next video.